Hello, hello guys, how are we doing? And welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at a gameplay of Sifuzzy or Sifuzzy, I'm probably butchering it. Uh, but this is the Help With Heart series where I go through viewers and subscribers' gameplays, offering tips and tricks and ways they can improve their gameplay. So think of it as like a, a one-off coaching session for you guys. Um, before we get into the um, actual gameplay itself, there's a couple of things I wanted to cover. First things first, um, I've had a lot of traffic on these Help With Hearts forms, so I am trying to get through them as much as possible. I'm going with the oldest to the newest, so if yours is, you know, if you've submitted yours a few weeks ago, it will be coming up. Um, but do bear in mind, I want it to be non-repetitive, so if I, the last video I did was an Invasion Control, if you've submitted an Invasion Control just after that one, I'm probably going to wait a couple of weeks or at least a week to post your one now, just because I don't want it to be completely repetitive. Um, the format of the video, if you're new to the channel, uh, usually is I go through the form that the subscriber submitted, which looks a little bit like this. Um, I then go through the gameplay and then I do a little bit of a summary, giving the uh, the viewer or subscriber uh, a couple of tips they can take away with, where I think their potential rank is and some things that I think was actually really good about their gameplay. Um, if you want to get yours submitted, you can follow the link down in the description below, fill out the form, submit a, uh, a clip to YouTube or Twitch, and I will watch it and go through it. So let's kick it off. So this is a PC player who's currently in Plat 2 at the time of recording the gameplay. The highest rank last year was Diamond 3, so a pretty cracked Diamond 3 uh, MW2 player by the all accounts. The settings look really good, so 6.6 or 7.7 with a 0.8.9 ADS. They clearly play around with it a little bit, otherwise it'd be a consistent one, but that seems fine. 105 FFV is absolutely perfect, and they seem to be stacked, so their setup here seems to be really good. So they've got a, a decent monitor, a decent headset, and a, an impact controller, which is uh, one with paddles, if you guys don't know. So their main focus for me is winning gunfights, so it says here, what would I? What, what can I do for them? So, uh, how to increase your gunfights and not throw my life? I used to be good at MW2. Won well, most of my gunfights. I made it at Diamond 3 by mostly playing solo. But in this game, I feel like mo feel like losing most of the gunfights. I'm not supposed to and can't even play solo in ranked. Even when I shoot first, bullets don't hit and I die immediately when I shoot. Most of the time, I feel like I can't shoot straight and have no idea why. So, there's probably a lot of you guys out there who feel similar to this. So, this might be a really valuable session for you guys to, you know, stay tuned to throughout. Uh, I, struggle most, I struggle mostly at winning gunfights. I have decent knowledge of rotation and spawns. Thanks for the useful videos you shared. You're welcome. <laughs> Sometimes my position and sentiment can be really bad, and if I want to improve on that also. Uh, I often struggle to win 1v2s or 3s when I play the hill, and when I try to play anchor to control the spawns by myself, it's hard to win against 3-4 guys that channel me uh, something that I used to win in MW2. Okay, so first thing, so I just want to note that the spawns are a little bit more sensitive on this game than it was in MW2, so anchoring spawns and playing with spawns yourself is really difficult. But um, let's get into the gameplay and see what we can do. So it appears we've got a Rio control happening here. A Rio control, Rio hard point. And using a sub, so... Brave gunfire. I'm surprised you didn't die there, to be honest, but that's fine. Okay. That's a tough gunfight to win. You didn't see him. He, he Yeah, that's... That I'm not... Because I'm, what I'm going to be trying here, because of what you've stated in your gameplay, I'm going to be trying to focus on mostly uh, the gunfights and things and winning your ones and things like that. So um, obviously if there's anything obvious that I need to point out about your uh, position and things, I will point out. But those two kills were really, really clean. I do want to say that is uh, super clean, super clean kills out you there. Another third kill. Perfect. Um, just as a heads up, you can... You can get on top of this little thing here and you can look over this vending machine. Not a lot of people I see playing do this, but you can actually be on hill time, hop on this little bowl, this thing here, and then look over the vending machine. Just a nice little little tip you might not know about. Just offers you a head glitch the other way looking down the stairs. So like this, you sense the spawns, you know where someone's coming from. Ah, sliding too much. That's what lost you that. You knew he was coming. Realistically, as soon as you saw him, you knew he was going to come out the side here. Where's he going to go? He's got to this point. He's never going to run down the stairs. He's never going to go back and rotate. He's clearing the corners and he's checking where you are. Holding this pre-aim, you will win this gunfight. I promise you. you there's no requirement to slide at him there. Um, I get there's movement in this game, which is a little bit more fun. But in MW2, you'd have probably just held that pre-aim because there was no movement in MW2, uh, whereas there is in this. So, yeah. Okay, so you got the AR out now. See what you do with this. Class setup seems reasonable. There's nothing too bizarre on it that I'm seeing. Good use of nades and stuns. A little bit of movement. You got one damage with a nade. You kill that guy. Perfect gunfight win there. And you're looking for the second guy. And uh, you seem to 
killed him, I think. No, she timid scoot. Type, you're just trying to. Ah, where was he then? <laughs> there's no way. All right, there's, that's a, that's a tough one to win. I got to be honest. I like in that situation, anyone would have died because simply you, you didn't know he was there. You did sort of look for him, but without checking every single crevice of the map, it's never going to happen. So uh, there's one thing I am noticing fairly a lot here. You do like a slide cancel. Um, and I don't mean uh, a slide cancel to camera someone. You're, you, it's like a habit, I think. You're slide cancelling every few seconds, um, which is fine. But I'm just wondering whether that might be a reason why you're losing gunfights. I guess we'll potentially see in this in this gameplay here. So now you're covering this right-hand side of the map here. Nice. Because of the colours, I'm not sure whether we're in a four stack or solo queue in, to be honest. So um, you'll have to let me know. And obviously, if you have any questions yourself, feel free to drop it down in the comments. Good win there. Nice, and you switched gun instead of reloading. Ah, but then you reloaded anyway, but that's fine. Ah, you probably could have played for that gunfight. So let's just take a little bit of a look at that interaction here. So you've got 18 bullets here. Plenty to kill someone. You could maybe put two bullets in him. What I know you're fairly weak, um, but you should you obviously you're obviously aware that the enemy team are going to be coming from P1 because that's where they're spawning, and you know where this guy is. I would have probably chowed him to be honest. You probably you're going to die running up these stairs because that's where they're going to be coming from. You'd have probably been better off just challenging it to be honest, pal. Um, but yeah, that's fine. It's just a, a sticky situation. But you know what? You're in the hill doing all you could. Um, it's playing for three seconds is wild, but yeah probably wouldn't have done that so in that situation they're going to be rotating to heal from this uh from this hard point here so all you could have done is pick the heady maybe sit on this heady just here and hold a premium out of either of these doors you'd have got a kill um and you'd have only lost what three seconds of heal time so it's really really not that important to break this like this um you literally could have sat facing one of the back doors and just simply won that gunfight so that wasn't really a gunfight. You just sort of lurch yourself into the hill there, put yourself in a really sticky situation where you would have been better off just holding back a little bit. There was no reason to break that hill at three seconds or five seconds, however much it was. Um, yeah, just uh, you, it wasn't a, it wasn't your. It was, I guess the gunfight itself you, was almost unwinnable. Anyone in that sort of position probably would have lost the gunfight, but you put yourself into that position, which obviously affected you uh, negatively. Okay, so I like the fact you're flexing a little bit. So you're doing that. You're playing the role where. You've got the sub when you need a sub. You've got the AR when you feel like it benefits you having the AR. Nice kill. Tough. So. Yeah, tough. That's fine. So you. Yeah, I don't think that was a. That's a really hard gunfight to win. He just threw himself at you. You you know. That's not on you, I don't think. To be fair. You were in the mix. You wanted to get in the mix. That's absolutely fine. Perhaps if you had a sub, you maybe would have won that. Because you side cancelled and your radius out of a side cancel with an AR is obviously going to be a little bit longer. So I get the feeling you're a bit unsure of what you need to do here. Um, you're waiting for your team. No one's really tr trying to make the first move. I assume you're solo queuing for the fact that no one's sort of doing much here. Nice. You're playing very aggressively with an AR, um, which might be a reason why you're losing a lot. Of, you feel like you're losing a lot of gunfights. Um, from what I'm seeing, at least on this map, um, you are moving with the fluidity of a sub, and which is why, so far this gameplay, you've been playing, or you at least been. I imagine your KD with a sub this game was far better than your KD with an AR. Like right there, you're slide cancelling a lot. I mean, I've got to be honest. So. Every sort of step forward, you're nice. You won that kill because you pre aimed. You've got the nade here. You're sort of, you can see someone on the red dot here, on the mini map here, on the red dot of the top left. And um, you know that they're coming from the front. You're putting yourself in a really sticky situation. You're moving far too much for someone who knows there's someone else coming. You're slide cancelling. You've caught, he's caught you right now. I bet if we watch that kill cam, you're literally just sprinting right at them. Yeah, a pre aim. This, I think you, if you reduce the amount of sliding you're doing, you probably win that gunfight, to be honest. Um, it was the fact that if you'd have pre-aimed that, you'd have probably got the kill. See, again, there was a slide there. 
Not sure why. Not sure why. I get it's a it's a habit it's hard to break out of to be fair. You're feeling you're feeling cracked though. So that's a I wouldn't say that's your fault you lost that gunfight. Um You're trying to chase the red dot there. Completely understand, but it's just a shame that when you've done to do that, there's, there's three of them there. So that's just a that's just an unfortunate No, so you're playing this fairly steadily. I don't mind the slide cancels to headies. Like that is a is a perfect use of a slide cancel. Um, this next one here, you slide cancel to this heady, which means you're going to camera anyone who's staring at this heady. So I don't mind that slide cancel whatsoever. Ah, that's tough. That's a hard gunfight to win. You were a little bit squishy. He knew where you were. You didn't know where he was. Um, yeah, that's all you could have done there. Okay, so you're 20 points down. And there is 10 seconds left of the hill. I would have potentially liked to see a row there. So let's analyze what's just happened. I know I'm not I know you want me to focus on your winning your gunfights and things like that, but this is something that I just want to maybe um you know what's going on here. So you've just approached this hill and you know there was an enemy on it. They've just got off the hill, which means they're either going down vendor machine they were this side of the vendor machine when you got to here and they've run down they've gone to the bridge or they've just backed up to their spawn likelihood is they haven't backed up to their spawn so what i'd have liked to have seen you do here is as soon as that went white back up a little bit check if they've gone down the vending machine alley here to your left towards where p2 is if not you know that they'd have the likelihood is that have gone through bridge here so i probably would have left these nine seconds here because realistic or eight seven however many there were seven seconds I'd have probably left those seven seconds here and just looked for this kill because this guy can be really annoying. He might flip spawns. If he managed to get through vending here, he's going to... Your team are looking at the radar assuming you've got this side of the map covered. So they're not going to even think about an enemy coming through this hand, this little vending alley here. Um, and like similarly, if he's, if he's decided to run out over the bridge uh, and down towards their spawn, he might flip you out. So it's really worth looking for that kill. I don't think he's backed up. So it's just going to be interesting. Let's, I mean, let's see how it plays. If you spawn out after the death... Ah, there he is, I think, probably. Yeah, that'll be him. So, I, I get that wasn't a gunfight because he shot you in the back, but there was potentially uh, signs in which you could have guessed he was there. Um, the fact that, you know, he's not going to have backed up to spawn. He's either, he's either would have, as I say, he would have either gone garage or, or bridge. And there, uh, he was bridge. Nice, flips the R again. Very good shots. Like, your sensitivity and setting seems to be really good. You linked a jump shot in there at some point as well, which is just very clean. Um, you got that kill perfectly. You slide cancelled into his camera. Nice. That was good. That's a good use of a slide cancel. You slide it into a gunfight um, when they don't know you're there. And you sort of, because they've got they've got height on you, you're sort of getting, you're cameraing them at that same position as well. So, yeah, that's tough. I'm not going to, criticize that gunfight too much here good win good win good win so just as a preface this is a these gunfights you're about to take on probably aren't the smartest gunfighters so you know yourself when you're on this p3 hill bottom of these eskies you have someone watching eskies you have someone watching the stairs so no matter which way you push it, you're probably running into a preem, which means you either have to do this with a teammate, or literally, or that's all you're going to die probably, unless you manage to pick one out. But they're going to be expecting this. That's not necessarily a gunfight you should win because he knows where you're coming from. I'd have perhaps suggested to wrap around the left with your teammate and get the spawns and then push from there. Um, just be a little bit more unpredictable, I'd say, and you probably, you probably get a kill. So you switch back to your sub, which I fairly I like. Good use of nades there, perfect. You played your life really well there. Oh, just seen two people, let's see how I manage that. Okay. Yeah, that's tough. You got you got two of them, that, you did a lot of work there. Now, if I was going to be really picky, uh, and I don't know how picky you want me to be, um, but you managed to get the first guy there. Now, this guy, you've got eight, but you've, you've already, you're aware you've sprayed a lot of bullets into these guys, and you've just seen a second guy here. He knows exactly where you are. I probably would have played my life. If this were me, I'd have got the first kill, or at least if I, I'd like to think I'd do this. I'd have got that first kill and dipped and tried to like play my life a bit, 
wait for the team to pinch and uh, and go from there but obviously he's just caught you a bit off guard because uh, he laid down so that was a good play from the guy there So like this, you're, you're covering all bases, you're picking up an AR, which you might find useful when it when you get to it. So I like that. It's a good, that's a good, uh, yeah, that's rough. So that was a little bit of a weird gunfight to, to have. Oh my God, that guy was literally next to the boxes anyway. Yeah, you, you're dead there, but maybe could have got one. It was a weird gunfight because he was flying through the air like Buzz Lightyear, but um, yeah, I'm not going to over criticize that one whatsoever. So I sort of like this. This is this is really the only way to break the hill um, when they have it is you need to use your stuns and nades and then hopefully they over peak and you get a free pick and then you push as a team. And um, So at this point, you've got two down. Oh, it's a 2-2 two, two now. Yeah, that's tough. So you did... I don't know if you'd have had time to react, but you did shoot on his gun... On his... So... You're probably, you're probably so locked into looking at where this person is on the hill that you haven't even thought about how my teammates just died behind me and looked at the minimap. So maybe a little bit more minimap awareness there. You were weak. You'd have probably died anyway, but you maybe would have put a couple of bullets in them. I don't know. A little bit more minimap awareness there. You might have been able to spin on them. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, you were very weak anyway. You probably would have lost that. Big gunfight there. Dude, I don't, I don't know why you don't have a sub out the whole time. Got to be honest. Um, at least on this hill, I don't know what you, how you play on a map like uh, Invasion or High Rise or Skid Row, but you are very, very mobile. Um, yeah. So, again, a very similar situation to what we saw on P1. He's just got off the hill. Um, he's either going to be coming towards you, or he, there's three ways he can go realistically. He's either coming towards you, backing all the way up to his spawn and then wrapping back around to the bridge or he's going to cut through mid now the likelihood is a good player will never back up to the spawn because they make no progress on the map so i'm i would naturally cancel that one out and realistically worst case scenario if he does go back to that it's like his own side of the map he's not really affected your team too much he's literally just put himself back to where he should like if he did just spawn back in um so my the point of what i'm saying here is you should have pre-aimed this hill he you he's just come off the hill you want to gamble on your side of on the side of caution in the fact that he might be running towards you. So I'd have probably just held his pre-aim here. If you don't see him coming towards you here, uh, great, you don't get a kill. Oh well, it is what it is. But you know he's probably just gone middle, and that's intel that you can then use. So you need to just be a little bit more patient in those gunfights where you've got intel on the fact that they're on the hill, um, and they've just come off the hill. So you need to in your head try and work out okay where could they have gone. I know it's hard to do in the moment because there's a lot happening. Um, but try and make it a little bit of a routine that when you see someone get off the hill, you think, okay, where would they have gone? And pre-aim. Pre-aim the one way you think they might have gone. If they don't go there, you've at least narrowed that area down and you just you just don't want to sprint right at them here. So I like this. Uh, you're holding P1 here. This is nice. They're going to be spawning deep, deep back right. Any kills you get because you are pushed up here. Ah, unlucky. Oh, your team flip spawns anyway, so they've spawned out. So you've just spawned this far deep, um, which means that a player on the enemy team would have been P1. Obviously, you've seen the spawn guys. You don't need me to tell you this. Um, but that means the player's pushed either like P1 or like going towards top bridge or pushing into your spawn. Otherwise, you'd have spawned uh, where your teammates pretty much are, just to buy this diner here. So yeah, that's that's why there's an enemy literally at the bottom of your rescues, which is, which is why you spawn a little bit further out. Nice. Very good kill. So what you're doing here, you're... Oh, unlucky, unlucky. So, I do wonder. Did he kill him? Yeah, he did. Okay, ignore me. I thought I thought we left that guy alive at the bottom of the stairs, but um, it must have been a different player. No, that guy's wrapped through P2. That's a good play from him. Again, shot in the back. Not ideal. Not much you could have done there, really. Unless you've got walls. <laughs> okay, good first blood onto the hill. Yeah, that's really tough. 
I've never seen anyone like down there. That's going to be that's a, a hard read. Yeah, the only way you break these hills when they're set up and you've got to come up a head glitch, really, is to use that as a head glitch. You don't really want to be running up. You want to get to the top of the eskies or get to the top of these stairs, see where enemies are, head glitch it so that you're in a, you've sort of got an advantage, even though they've got height and they're holding your hill. Uh, you've got an advantage on the head glitch. So you probably could have done that here when you pushed top eskies. Um, I mean, you were you were doing it. You were aiming a little bit too low. So maybe when you're uh, when you're here, maybe approach this a little slower. But yeah, it was that's a really unfortunate gunfight. Your gun literally, if I can pause at the right spot, your gun's literally covered the player. But yeah, I like the gist of this. You're preaming it. You could have been a little bit lowered for to be like a really unreal head glitch. But hey, it is what it is. So yeah, get the nade out. As you've noticed the guys there. But again, you've got someone flanking every single time. Okay. <clears throat> I've got to be honest, not a bad gameplay. I don't think your shots are the problem. So I don't think it's the fact that you're losing gunfights because um, your shots are bad. I think your shots are generally pretty good. I've seen some beams out of you with the Rival 9 there. Um, okay. So let's, run, let's rewind this back and then go through a couple of uh, suggestions I would have. So the good, let's go through what I thought was actually really good out of you. So your use of stuns and nades were, um, I'd say, pretty good. I like that. You've got really good movement. You're obviously very capable of slide cancelling. Um, and your, the, your ability to shoot straight with the rival uh, and transfer, pick off a player here, pick off a player there, is really good. Uh, you also, in situations like this one we're literally seeing right here, you are picking up a gun. Uh, say if you're using a sub, you're picking up the AR just in case you need one. And that's something that not a lot of players do. Even at a really high level, people will see it. People will be running around with a Rival 9. They'll see an MCW on the floor and they won't even switch out the Renetti for it. Um, but that obviously is a really good thing to do. I would not stop doing that. Um, you also pre-aim sometimes. Now, this is going to sort of lead me into the fact where I think you could uh, definitely work on something. So... Uh, so yeah, your shots are good. Your long range shots are good. The only the only actual gunfights you lost because your shots were bad uh, was when the guy hopped out of the plat towards P4 later on in the video. Um, but yeah, what I do, I think you could probably work on. So your awareness of what's happening on the map could be slightly improved. So um, when people, there was a couple of situations we saw someone that just left the hill as you were approaching it, and yet you didn't. You weren't really aware of where they'd be. The guy pushed you up the ramp on off of P4 that one time later on in the gameplay. A guy pushed out P1 um, towards the bridge, and you weren't really sure where they could have been. That Use that intel. Try and think of when you're pushing a hill, and um, you've seen an enemy's literally just got off it and left it white. Okay, where could they be? They must be around somewhere. I'm going to get on the point, and they're going to be aware of the fact that I've literally just got on the point, and they're going to be close. So you've got to really be careful that when an enemy's just topped off a point, and then you hop on it, they're going to be looking for you, and they're going to know pretty much where they are, where you are, because you're on the point, but you're not really going to have a clue where they are. So you can use that information uh, to help you, but I'm not going to touch on that too much because I have mentioned it a fair amount in the video itself. Um, the next thing I want to say is slow down. Slow down. There's a reason why, I mean, if I imagine if we looked at your KD with an AR on this map and then on this gameplay and a KD with a sub, your KD with the AR would be far less than your KD with a sub. And I think the main sole reason for that is you are sliding far too much. Um, I know a lot of streamers, if you watch Warzone and a lot of cracked guys do slide cancel a lot, but you see it's far more situational. You don't want to slide cancel for the sake of slide canceling. It's a habit you're going to try and have to get out of. Uh, and that's my one thing I want to try and, you know, have you leave with at the end of this is if you're in a game, just try and try and draw back that slide cancel. You don't want to be doing it half as much as you are. The only really way reason you should be using it is if you're trying to camera someone and you're only really going to do that is if you're approaching any sort of cover so if you join if you slide cancel into a head glitch that's the perfect use of it pretty much that's that's the ideal use for a, for a slide cancel um or if you come around a corner and you want to be a little bit surprising you want to do that but there's so many times this gun on this gameplay here where you're slide canceling just up a street where you could be walking or holding a pre-aim um so yeah i think the only reason why I think the reason why you've been much more successful with the Rival 9 uh, compared to the MCW in this gameplay is because the Rival 9 is a little bit more versatile it aims in quicker the sprint to fire speed is quicker so it's a little bit more forgiving that when you are getting caught out slide cancelling you're able to react a lot faster now I think if you this is a perfect perfect example here that we're watching right now where you've slide cancelled up you get a couple kills you slide cancel just straight 
and they've killed you because you instead you didn't do that instead of holding a pre-aim. So I would say, as a rival nine player, if that's what you want to do, fair enough, because you're clearly able to do that. Slow cancel as much as you want because your reaction times and the rival nine's mobility offers you the ability to, uh, to do so. Now, if you're using an AR, you've got to slow it down. Um, hold a pre-aim. You, if you, as you say, you've watched my spawn guys and uh, my my hard point tips and tricks. You clearly have an idea of where they're going to be coming from just pre-aim it like if you have a, a slight idea that an enemy may be coming from that way hold a pre-aim for two three seconds um and if they don't push it oh well you can move forward a little bit if they do push it you've hold a pre-aim and you win a gunfight it's that simple most of the gunfights you lose on this gameplay here are because either one you're moving too much or two you haven't positioned yourself correctly so i just want you to um every time you're sort of pushing a hill you're thinking okay if I'm on the other side, if I'm the enemy player and they're looking at me pushing this, would I win that gunfight? If so, take a route, take a different route, try and get some damage off with a nade beforehand uh, and just try and relax a little bit. But yeah, the biggest thing I want to suggest to you is just if you're using the AR and maybe even the rival, slow it down a bit. Hold a pre-aim if you think you know where the enemy's going to be coming from. Trust your instincts. If you're wrong, you'll learn and you'll take that as a note from going forward. This is something that I struggled with at the very start of the game. As soon as Side Clancing came into the game, I was like, you know what? I've got so much movement now. This is great, but it just gets you killed far too often. And this is probably why you say on Modern Warfare 2, you succeeded a little bit uh, a little bit more. It's because you didn't have this movement on MW2. And as a result, you weren't getting caught out nearly half as much. Um, so yeah, one thing I want you to take from this, just try and slow it down. Move, try like not move less, but just try and be a little bit less cracked with the uh, with the side cancels. Um, I definitely think with those handful of tips I've just mentioned there, you could be a Diamond 3 player again. I actually have seen worse players in Crimson, so I could definitely see you get low Crimson maybe. Um, but yeah, just you just got to work on uh, your game pacing and your, your, your ability to move and try and just draw that back just a tad. Um, so I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, obviously you can message me down in the comments or um, you can join my Discord down below and just DM me on Discord, whatever you like. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed. Ciao for now.